Good morning. Welcome everyone to worship. I'm Pastor Maggie. I'm so happy to be worshiping with all of you today. Those of you who are here, those of you who are watching online, welcome. And I have a wonderful announcement. If you did not see, uh, Dan and Robin Hine are back. So we welcome them back and continue to hold Robin in our prayers. I invite you all now to settle in and to allow yourself a chance to breathe and to center yourself with our Creator and with one another by hearing these words from Psalm 1. Blessed are those who walk hand in hand with God. They are like trees planted by streams of water that yield fruit in due season and their leaves flourish. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Despite our best efforts to live into our baptismal waters, we allow drought to enter our being. We thirst for God and ask the Spirit to rain down on us. So let us confess our sins together. We confess there are barren places in our lives, places where we have drifted far from you, places where we find ourselves thirsty, broken, and adrift. Forgive us, quench our thirst from the fountain of your living waters, immerse us in your spirit so that the world may be saturated with your love. Amen. Grace flows like a river, Mercy, like a never-ending stream. Believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Amen. We continue worship by singing our gathering song, You Have Come Down to the Lakeshore, number 817.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Spirit of God, may your word be as rain falling from heaven, soaking dry soil until it sprouts and springs forth good seed in us, so that we may become sustenance for a hungry world. Through Christ our living water. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. morning. Our reading is from the book of Jonah. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid his fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a mighty storm came upon the sea that the ship threatened to break up. Then the sailors were afraid, and each cried to his God. They threw the cargo that was in the hold of the ship and had laid down oh they threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them Jonah meanwhile had gone down into the hold of the ship and had laid down and was fast asleep the captain came and said to him what are you doing sound asleep get up call on your God perhaps the God will spare us a thought so that we do not perish the sailors said to one another Come, let us cast lots, so that we may know on whose account this calamity has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? I am Hebrew, he replied. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were even more afraid, and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them so. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you, that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea, then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more stormy against them. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, O Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of innocent blood for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased to you. So they picked Jonah Jonah up and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord even more, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, 
the son of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in, because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that, it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had taken it off and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from land, only about a hundred yards off. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and I invite the children to come up, because we have something special for you today, a VBS recap.
Yeah, Ace came to remind us, believe in God! <laughs> That's better. See the eardrum yelled by now so we can do this again. So, and our Bible verse was from Jeremiah. But you are the only true God. We learned that people sometimes believe in a lot of different things. But we know that there is only one true God, right? Yeah. Well, on day two, our Bible buddy was Squirt. Squirt was a fun night, wasn't it? Yeah. So Squirt came to remind us to obey God. Oh, yay! And we also talked about obeying parents <laughs> and grandparents. But Squirt, he was a fun one. He taught us a Bible verse from John that said, here, it, it, here is what it means to love God. It means we obey his commands. Now, Bible adventure time. Anyone remember where, to, where you got to crawl into? A whale. They got to hear the story of Jonah and the whale by getting inside. You did? It was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Not a lot of times do you get to go in the belly of a whale like Jonah. No, but you guys did, and that's how you learned that story, right? So, day three. Anyone remember who came on day three? Our turtle named Tank. Well, it's close, but yes, Tank the turtle was it. And Tank taught us to trust God. I think they're waking up. Our Bible story told us how Jesus calmed the seas. And that's what we heard in our, our lesson today, too. So after the whale came, and you guys all finally got out of the belly, the next day, we learned how Jesus found the seas. And guess what? Didn't you also learn a song that kind of went with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Okay, good response. So how about you get up and sing Rain or Pour for everyone? How's that?
treasure that he gave us was his son, Jesus. And in John 3, 16, we learned that for God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That was pretty cool. God gave us his greatest treasure, Jesus. And you know what else was pretty cool? That you guys learned a song about it. Yeah? Yeah? Are you ready? Yeah. 
Wonderful. Thank you, Lane, and everybody for all your hard work. That was really special. Now I have to try to follow that. <laughs> May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O God, my strength and my joy. Amen. As you all just experienced during the VBS recap, St. John really knows how to make a splash with the kids. And I was blessed to come and hang out at VBS this past June before I started my call here. And from the second I walked into the door, the entire space was transformed, kind of like it is now, into an under-the-sea paradise. All were invited to not only hear the word of God that was read by Mr. Tim, but all were invited to experience it in their bodies and to use their imaginations. For example, the story of Jonah, as you heard a little bit about, was transformed into a real life experience when we migrated from the SS VBS ship that you'll see on your way out into the giant belly of a fish. 
we crawled in there and sat in this dark space anticipating Mr. Tim's next words where we continued where we left off today in Jonah's journey. Here we heard the fish's heartbeat, and then, with a loud burping noise, we evacuated the fish. Now this is just a snippet from what was experienced that week to share with you the creativity and the imagination that went into preparing this time so that the kids could experience God in different ways. And this is so important because so much of who God is is beyond our imagination and our understanding. And that is what this theological whale of a tale, story of Jonah, is all about. The story is not meant to focus on whether it is possible to live in a fish for three days or not. The book of Jonah is an embellishment, it's a satire. And it is so out there to show that God's love and God's actions exceed our imagination. The book of Jonah is filled with plot twists and with characters behaving opposite of what we might expect. And it ends showing God's love for all humanity, which in theory is beautiful, except when you think about the people you don't really like, the people you might identify as the Ninevites. And now that can be a hard pill to swallow. And Jonah was so upset over this, he cried out in anger and frustration because God was merciful and loving to a group of people who persecuted and hurt his own people. And I think we can all relate to this frustration towards others on one level or another, especially right now with all the many, many negative political ads buzzing around. It is so unfortunate, but it seems the common practice has become candidate bashing, brought to you by one party on another. And it really makes me wonder what kind of world this is creating, as it is through relationships that we experience life together. And yes, some relationships need to end if they are toxic and not rooted in God's love. But the majority of relationships should not embody such disrespect and hatred simply because of differing views, as those are the relationships that need the breath of God's nurturing love and grace to transform them. Transformation, like Jonah begrudgingly brought to Nineveh. Yet despite Jonah's frustration, anger, and disobedience, God never left Jonah. Instead, God journeyed with him and even met him right there where he was at. In those turbulent seas, Jonah was provided a very strange way out, revealing that if God journeys with stubborn Jonah, God journeys with you. Through all your emotions and frustrations, God is there guiding you and providing you with hope for the journey even if it is through the proverbial belly of a fish. Because God works in ways that are beyond our imagination, just like we heard in the gospel reading today. After fishing all night, the disciples caught nothing, and in the morning Jesus appeared and told the disciples to cast your net to the right side of the boat. And there, beyond their imaginations, the disciples caught a net so full of fish, they could not even haul it in. Now this is all great for the disciples, but what does this mean to you when you find yourself with that empty net? On the days you find yourself desperately treading water because there is simply too much to do. Or when the rain won't let up and the storm is closing in. Or when you feel stuck in a boat hungry and thirsting for something more than what you have been living on. Or when you are trying to change or do something different, but as hard as you paddle, you can't seem to get anywhere because the current against you is just too strong. Remember who has come down to the lakeshore and know it is okay to abandon your small boat 
as there are seas beyond your imagination that God is waiting to share with you. So splash about from time to time and let the leak spring in your boat. For God will meet you where you are at and provide a way to dry land, even if it is in the most unimaginable place in the cramped belly of a fish. Amen. We continue our worship with the prayers of intercession. As droplets of water are gathered together into one lake, so let us gather our prayers for the church, for those in need, and for all of God's creation, responding to God of grace with hear our prayer. Creator God, we give thanks for water, the creatures of the water, and for the water cycle that connects all of life on earth. We give thanks for the lakeshore, for the life that thrives there, and for you inviting us to seek other seas. Help us to care for your creation and the planet. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for countries at war, for violence, hate, and suffering, and ask that they be brought to an end. Guide leaders to create systems that enrich lives and to bring justice and empowerment in spaces needed. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for the aftermath that continues to be discovered from Hurricane Ian. For those who have lost loved ones, homes, and jobs, continue to provide support, hope, and comfort during this difficult time. God of grace, hear our prayer. Mothering God, you give us the gift of imagination, and you invite us to live into the mysterious ways of your being. Help us to, treat, help us to trust in your vast love and to trust that you are there, providing us paths beyond our imagination. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Abiding God, we pray for the ministries here at St. John. Continue to guide us into the direction you are calling. And we give thanks for everyone who volunteered their time at BBS this summer, for the memories made, and for experiencing your love in imaginative ways. God of grace, hear our prayer. Healing God for all in need and for those who suffer from disease, sickness, and need your care. Today we especially lift up Marilyn Grunenwald, Kathy Reisman, Pat Plunkett, Robin Hine, Thea Heil, and Carol Fitzke. May your healing spirit reach them all where it is needed and bring them into fullness of life you desire for each of them. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, abounding in thanksgiving, we pray for this week's prayer ministry. Aliyah Ostrike, Susan Knight, Brandon Webb, Todd Miller, Bryce Heil, Shane Bielke, Kay Behrens, Stephen Zahn, Melissa Haraldson, Bruce Kors, Colton Kufal. May they feel your presence today and all days. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and help us forever in your eternal waters. Through Jesus Christ, our living water. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to share the peace however you feel comfortable. may be seated and we'll continue with our offering.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing, and make us ready to share it with all in need, through Jesus Christ who sets a table for all. Amen. Before we begin communion, does anybody need a prepackaged one if they would like to take it in your seats? If so, just raise your hand, and then Usher can bring it around for you. All right, then please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened us up to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray how Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. For those of you wanting to take the pre-packaged communion, I invite you to open the side with the wafer on it. And to hear these words, take and eat. This is my body given for you. I now invite you to open the juice side and to hear these words. Taste and drink. This is my bod blood shed for you. For those of you wishing to partake in continuous communion, we will start on this side today. And we do have gluten-free wafers available upon request. I now invite the communion assistants to come forward and to help with this meal. And for all, come. All is now ready. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
Let us pray. Nourishing God, you have filled us with your love. You have strengthened us with Christ, and you continue to germinate the gift of faith in us. By your Holy Spirit, embolden us to be the body of Christ in the world, so that we can serve the earth and all of its creatures. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. We have a lot of announcements today. For a full list of them, you can check your bulletin, but I do want to highlight some. Time and talent sheets are out, and we appreciate all who are able to volunteer. You can put your forms either in the ushering plate next Sunday, or you can leave them today in Mary's, our administrative assistant's mailbox, or you can give them to Lane, or check with Lane on different opportunities available. Um, in your bulletin, uh, you will see that on Tuesday, October 25th, at 11.45 a.m., there will be a Bible study with me from the Ma Gather magazine, and you are invited to bring a brown bag lunch and enjoy fellowship with one another during the study. And if you would like to subscribe to the Gather magazine, you can reach out to Jan Miller. And in your bulletin today, you will have an insert about the poinsettia order. If you would like to purchase one, the deadline is November 6th. St. John will once again be hosting a Trunk for Maine's school second annual Trunk or Treat event on Tuesday, October 25th from 4.30 to 6.30. And to host it, we need some candy. So you're more than welcome to bring in some donations and leave them in the shopping cart out here in the narthex. Uh, the last Bible study on Ruth will take place today at the table in the narthex and all are welcome. And we are updating our website. So we are trying to get some more up-to-date pictures. So we would like you, if you're able to stay after the service, head outside by the sign where we'll take a picture. Are there any other announcements? No. No. All right. <laughs> then please stand as you are able to receive the blessing. May the dew in the morning bring you hope. May the rain from the clouds bring you peace. May the waves from rivers, lakes, and streams bring you joy. May the frost bring you strength. And may the living word of God bring you courage. In the name of the Creator, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us conclude our worship by singing Shine, Jesus Shine, number 671.
go to the sign to get a group picture and go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God.